you know, we sat here, I don't know how many weeks ago, against Harvard, and, and that was hard. Um, I was thinking about that as we're, you know, celebrating with the band. And, and the thing I said, it hasn't changed. The, this is a team that everybody can be proud of. How we play, how we do things as a coach. They're not perfect. I'm not perfect. They know that. But it, it's a group of guys that just works their tails off and they completely are – into, I mean, the sad part is we can't practice next week. Like, I'm going to, I'm serious. Like, uh, and they're all saying that, like, it's such a tight group of guys. And we're not going to have, I mean, I know 6 a.m. meetings suck, stink. <laughs> but, you know, it's a bonding. And, and you just feel it every day of practice when the music turns on and these guys are so in tune with things. It, it's going to be like, I, I know I'm going to be emotional tomorrow you know, having to flip the page because we, we got to, you know, we'll celebrate this tonight and this week, but then you got to flip the page and it, it's going to be hard without, you know, 110 over here, you know, <laughs> practice next year. It really is because um, of what he's meant and, and what he's meant to everybody. It, it, and it's just uh, uh, a credit to them. I, I said at halftime and everybody's out there, do you scream? Did you? I, no, I just kind of said, <laughs> we got to we got to keep trusting. Like I didn't feel like we trusted. We we were in this emotional state, and we were kind of fighting each other just a little bit. And if we just trust and just focus on the now, we're going to be fine. And um, you know, I, I think they know we trust each other as coaches and players, and players and coaches, and and, and that's where we are. Why we are where we are. For the players, please. What's most satisfying about the way you won? Um. I guess I'll start. I mean, I think just going into <laughs> halftime, like coach, like like everybody knows, like I mean, we're down 14-10, but there wasn't a there wasn't like a a, a feeling of doubt. Like coach said, we were, we kind of had like little internal battles. People were arguing. It was just very petty, and like that's what you hear in the locker room. Coaches on the offensive side saying the same thing that our defensive coaches are saying. It's just guys, we know what we're doing. Self inflicted wounds, and we're being we're we're just um conflict inside. It's just it's just tearing us apart, and that's something that we we kind of got rid of in the second half. And I think you guys can see how we played as a team in the second half. Yeah, maybe the offense, maybe the turning point offensively in the game was it Jordan Osborne on third down on the, on, on the first drive in the third quarter. Yeah, I don't even remember it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was a great point. <laughs> 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 where, 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 talk, where, where was it? Where was he? The first drive of the third quarter. First time the quarter got through a slant. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm thinking because it was a run play. That's why yeah. I'm not remembering it. Yeah. It's yeah. supposed to be a run play. It's supposed to be a run play. So, if the backer Sorry, comes in, it. he throws it. Yeah, it's a run play yeah, yeah. and we read a guy. Yeah, and so if, yeah. if the backer does something, then we throw it. So the call is actually a run play. That's why I wasn't thinking. And if they're yeah. cheating on it, then we throw it. Yeah, so he made a really good play. Honestly, I didn't even think I, I threw like a great ball. I, he got on his chest, he beat the corner, he beat another guy, and then he ran for 15 yards. And it's awesome to get yards after the catch. Probably your first big play of the game. When the yards have been kind of grinding. Yeah, grinding. Yards. Yeah, I mean that was all him, really. I mean it's just one on one. He's supposed to, he has to get six yards for sure, and he turned it into whatever he did, twenty. Chad, do you feel after that drive that you kind of started wearing them down? Um, I would say that. I mean, I feel, I feel we just kind of we just kept playing our game and we started playing better. I mean, they were playing well at the beginning of the game for sure. They had a lot of energy, and then yeah, I guess people get tired. The rush always gets a little bit less at the end of the games, but I mean, we yeah, we just kept playing our game. What was the difference on uh, third down than you had more conversions on that first drive in the second half? <laughs> Yeah, I think our, our receiver. He's not gonna say this. Our receivers and Coach Perry challenged them. Started playing faster, and, and that was huge. We got in better third down situations, but for whatever reason, we had all we have these great senior receivers. They were a little bit in a fog in, in the first half, and we they got challenged. And these guys will tell you those guys came out in the second half, and they were phenomenal. Yeah, fight, right? So I could have done for a couple of those were on me in the first yeah. half. I just didn't yeah. stop and get kind of comfortable in the game. But then once the game goes on, you get more comfortable. We were getting better situations. I think we had. Decent amount of third and longs too, which is those are hard to convert. Yeah. They got a couple really good players. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit more around here, down like twenty pounds from this season. <laughs> oh no no no! It's fast. <laughs> it's fast. I'm up I'm up five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. You haven't lost weight. I have I have lost weight, but <laughs> season. He's at its hey. speed. <laughs> <laughs> you don't worry about setting this rushing record against that mean team. Yeah, that's me. I just think it's a product of how hard we worked as a team all year. And, you know, our offensive line has done a phenomenal job. I know that that was a, sp a spot on our team where, you know, the media, we don't really look to really care what the media is saying, but when the media says that the, our offensive line is a, is a weakness, um, you know, those guys really bonded together, and they were five strong is their motto. And whoever, whether one guy goes down, next guy shows up, Riley, he's a freshman, 
didn't matter. All, all those guys played their ass off all yeah. season. Yeah, and I don't know if these guys how well they know Keith Elias. I hosted him on his recruiting visit, and and he and we we get we stay in touch, and I'll bring him by to you know make sure he spends some time. But when you say it's Keith Elias, like and, you know you just approach that record, you're like holy cow, because he's one of the great players to ever play in the league. Dorian, if there was a defensive series that turned in, it was after the roughing the Texas penalty, yeah, and you just, you know you, now you got to go out and stop him again. Absolutely, it's hard enough yeah. in the first half. So it's, um yeah like I, we were just talking about that coming in I was saying um you know we had that big stop got that rough in the kicker and I went out there and I was like all right we're gonna stop them again as soon as we stopped them and then the offense went down there and scored I was like all right let's go like we're up they're not scoring on us our defense has been doing this all year so I mean we just kind of just stayed with our technique our alignments our assignments what coach preaches literally every day and uh yeah I mean like you said that was kind of the turning point that's when our defense was like all right let's go it's it's time to put the you know pedal to the metal in this game just, I mean, they were, they were hurting you with short and intermediate passes for much of the first half. What changed that you um, shut that down? Yeah, I think we were doing a lot more like cover eight and uh, cover three when they were doing those. And then uh, coach converted back to cover two, and we were just letting them throw it down in front of us and tackling it. So as you can see, they were throwing like three yard like three yard dunk passes, and we would just hit it right then and there. Um, so it kind of just emptied that. And then our front seven was doing a great job, as they have been the entire year. And they were just getting, you know, the quarterback really didn't have that much time to throw the deep ball because yeah. he was getting, he was pressured the entire time. So. Um, they got their hands up really good. I think it distracted them enough where some of those throws were just an, off enough. You weren't blitzing that much, though. I mean, it no. was mostly front four pressure, right? Abs ab that better, that's that's kind of been our model the entire year. Just our front four is, has been phenomenal this entire year. It's been a, yeah. a force to be reckoned with. They, they haven't been stopped yet this year. So, uh, they, yeah, kudos yeah. to them. They, they killed it. Dorian, what's the, uh, you know, you played a lot as a freshman winning that title. What's it like? 40 what's games. This title like? <clears throat> um, How's it different? It's uh, 40 starts. It, it's super. I mean, it's it's just unreal. It's also, you know, when we won the title last year, or uh, when we were freshmen, we lost our last game, so it was kind of bittersweet. It was like we had the outright chance, and we didn't take uh, take full advantage of it. And this one is just, it's awesome to win at home. You know, we had the crowd it was involved, and it was just, yeah, it's just something you're gonna remember forever. I remember that Harvard game my freshman year forever, just because of the energy. And this is this is very similar. It's 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 unreal. So is that you kind of mentioned it being bittersweet? Is that has had a different feeling from this year? Because, I mean, the Ivy League rules are what they are, so right. it's, a, it's a code championship. But is that a different feeling than this year, having won the final game, as opposed to as your freshman year where you, you didn't win? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, just you were able to end the season knowing that you did everything that – that you, that you could have done, you know. I mean, we lost that one to Harvard. It was tough, but Coach kind of came in there. He's like, it's a fo it's football. It's a long season. Anything can happen. You guys can keep doing what you're doing, and we'll see what happens at the end of the season. Control what you can control, and that's kind of what we did. So, yeah, I think this is definitely a different feeling just because, you know, we won it at home, won the last game. We did everything we could do, and like you said, Ivy League rules are Ivy League rules, so we did everything that we could. We did everything that we could. Yeah, it's in one thing. It's it's so hard. Like Gary Waters said it when I got the job. It's so hard to win an Ivy League title, and I'm kind of like John Lovett. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> it's not that hard. I did it as a player. Right. And then you get here and you see how hard it is and the challenges that that we have, and, and that's what makes it so much more rewarding. Whether however you win it, it, it at the end of the day, tonight. It's going to be a much more fun night when you win, you know, in terms of that. But, you know, it's nothing. I mean, the way the rules are, it's what the rules are. So you accept it, you move forward, and, um, you know, we'll have a great banquet tomorrow. Two more for the final. Yeah, so. Dorian, uh, I mean, you're sharing it. But did you, the way you guys came on at the end of the season, especially finishing it up like this, mm -hmm. the half, did you feel like you're the best team in the league? Absolutely. I think, I, I do feel like we're the best team in the league, and I think that the way that, that we perform on both sides of the ball and special teams kind of prove that we're the best in the league. And I think it's kind of not to be not to be too arrogant, but I think it's, I think it's known around the league too. Yeah. Well, no, and I don't think it's that. It's when when you go, if we if we were allowed to go to the playoffs, you know, we're all smart here. It's head to head, right? I mean, that's that's the tiebreaker from the time you're three to whatever. We're not allowed to, but everybody who has common sense says that. And I, I was fortunate. When I was a player, I lost head to head and I got a ring, right? But and I'm not taking it back. Like I'm keeping that one, <laughs> right? But the, the, the two that we've had, we won that, and you know, I, I think you do feel like it's a little better feeling, right? When you know that. Yeah, 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 did you win? Did you win in high school? Sorry, in high school? I'm not sure what you said. It's similar to like I won a basketball championship. I never won a football championship, so yeah, this is the first one. Uh, he was a great basketball player. <laughs> <laughs> it was like as a sophomore, so it didn't really count. This one's. Oh, yeah, I was kind of similar when I was a freshman. This one really 
Like I've, I yeah. feel like I've really we've really worked for yeah. it all together. in the quarterback so, room, so and these two guys will go up there at some point. It's quarterbacks who won championships. Yeah, he puts or, or if you want a road, or, or if you want a road scholar. So you either got to be a road scholar, <laughs> or you got to win a championship. And, and there's not many guys who've done that. So mm-hmm. it'll be nice to see these two guys up there. All right, Justin, and then we'll let the players finish. Like Chad, what, what did you think was the key that after the loss to Army, then you look at these last four games? How did that not make you guys fall apart? Or, you know, yeah, I mean, we kind of banded play. together. We we were really close knit senior class, and we, I mean, we saw we like whatever. Last year we kind of <clears> were down <throat> to Harvard. We came out in the second half. We got blown out. And this time we came back. We fought. And it was kind of a toss-up game that we ended up losing. We'd love to have it back, obviously. But the rest of the year, it was kind of we control what you can control. And we did a great job of doing that every week. Yeah. yeah. And, and just so these guys know, there, there's nobody who's won as many football games since Ivy League started as these, these seniors, right? Because we only got to play three years. Like, I would, you know, say if I got a fourth oh, year, maybe. But because they got to play four years, <laughs> this senior group's won 26 games. Nobody's won that since the 1950s before Ivy League play started. We'll so, that next year. you know, there's, there, there, there's, there's some, there's some really good accomplishments when you, when you see that. Okay. Okay. That's Thank you. Tonight. Just Thank worry you. about we the night. Thank you. Yeah, Thank I'll see you guys. Yeah, I didn't feel like <laughs> I didn't feel like it was dominant today. Like I, I said all week, and sometimes Craig thinks it's me uh, just saying that. Like I, I thought they were a terrific team. They've had a lot of bad breaks, but they worried me more than any team we played really since Harvard um, in terms of that. Just because they they threaten us in areas where we have some struggles, and you know we haven't beaten them in since I've been here, so six years or whatever, and, and where their strengths are match up well with us. And, and that's a, a tough thing, and, man, it's senior day. And I know, like, you can just give a team seven points on senior day because it, you can't play football. You don't play the Super Bowl, and you're crying, hugging your parents, and you go out and cover a kickoff. You know, we've been awful uh, on senior day, and, and it's really a hard thing to do um, in terms of that. But I, I did, you know, it is a nice feeling like, you know, if you're playing and you're trying to kick a field goal to win the game, it's a lot nicer having Gatorade dumped on you. <laughs> you know, you know the game's over and you can actually celebrate. Did you feel like that in the beginning then? Like that, that was the problem because you, know, you went three and no, out, three down and score and then you get a five they're, they're really and good. Over. They're really good, but I'm not, you know, and Craig knows this. Like I try to keep the distraction to a minimum. And there's no minimum. Like, I, I don't know what to do with the daggone thing because I know that it's really important and the parents and my parents, you know, came to every game as well. But I think we got to figure out something because, you know, as John said, like, you can't be crying and then go play. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just your mind's in two different places. And we've been so distraction-free. Like this group, we talk about eliminating all the things that can distract you, erasing them, and focusing on targets. And I've never been around a team that's done it as well as this group, including the NFL, in, in some of those years. Like they just do it so well uh, in terms of that. But I, that that one senior day is one that man, it's impossible. When darkness started, well, you didn't think of going in. Like that. No, I didn't think about. I wasn't thinking about that, or I was. I was more thinking about how do we get these guys back, you know, because I, I felt like they were their minds were a little elsewhere, and Dartmouth was attacking us in areas that we struggle. And how do we get our guys just snap back, locked in, and get them uh, ready to play? Because the big picture is we were either going to have a great banquet tomorrow. Or it was going to be really depressing. You know, seven three season should not be depressing. It was going to be really depressing. Like I, I don't even know what to, I'd say. I haven't. You know, I told him I wasn't. I spent too much time this week working on stuff for next week, and I, I didn't do it. Like I'll write a speech at six in the morning or something. I don't know. But you don't. You don't need this championship to validate the one three years ago. But where does this take us? We're on two and four years. Where does that take us? Yeah, I mean, it hasn't. You know, I, I don't know, Craig, since twenty years or something. Since Elias, that they, they, they won. And yeah, and they didn't play together. Freshmen weren't together. So, you know, nobody has two rings since the 60s um, that way. So, I, I mean, you know, we're going to be zero and zero. Like, this is no different than our press conference last year. <laughs> we will be zero and zero. Uh, they're going to celebrate this week, and I am too. 
And then when we go back on the road recruiting and they go back in the weight room, it's 2017. Like the page is turned. Like I'm going to miss a lot of those guys and all the seniors. You know, I'm going to miss that that group. But you have to. Like if we think that we start eight and two next year, then we're, we're going to be fooling ourselves. Like we're not we're not head and shoulders better than anybody next year. Yeah, I think our kickoff coverage is number one in college football. Um, or close, and we got a kicker who's been awesome. We have a coverage unit that's been awesome, and he actually kicked that one. It's the worst kick he's had all year. He kicked it to the middle of the field. He wasn't supposed to. And the coverage guys beat blocks, which Coach Sean Gleason has done a magnificent job, a special teams coordinator, and just he's got – you know, when you say passion and energy, every great special teams coach I've been around has his just love of doing it and exuberance. And, man, they get in that huddle, and they're rocking and rolling, and then we get that ball out. It gets kicked around. Who knows who has it? And that referee signals this way, and we've been really good in the red zone, the, the last drive of the first half notwithstanding, but that felt good. Yeah, they just like, if, once that happens, it's probably not going to go to the wire. And... Yeah. And, and, and they, and Dartmouth, if you look, I think their fourth quarter scoring is unreal. Um, it was huge, like 81 to 17. I, I don't know. It was, you guys can look that up. It was huge uh, in terms of the disparity, 69 to 11. So you don't want to be in a game where a team that that's all they've done is dominate there. Um, you know, that, that really helped it get over the hump. And we could be, other than the one play we had a coverage bust, uh, uh, we, we played really well. Well, you know, the offensive staff, and, you know, you've been around here. You guys have been around here long enough with James Perry. You know, he is incredibly creative, <laughs> you know, to the point where, you know, sometimes as an offensive lineman, I'm like biting my tongue, like, okay, I'll see how it looks in practice, and if it doesn't look good. And James at the point in maturity-wise where if he sees it in practice and we watch on film, he takes it out. You know, I think the first year I was really conservative that way, and um, I, I just really uh, – really uh, think he comes up with plays. Sometimes they don't work. You know, the play where Peabody's pitching it to Chad and we get sacked, sometimes they don't work. But I, I think we've gotten to the point where we're not afraid anymore. You know, and I, I don't know if I've ever felt that way as a coach. Like, I just trust this group of players that Chad's not going to throw a pick there. Chad's going to take the sack. We'll punt. We'll play a defense. we got a really good defense and see how it goes. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, I, I think it's so hard, you know, to measure a team bond. Like, I felt it since day one when Ross Tucker comes in and speaks to the team, and he's got their attention, and every guy is just locked in that way. And, you know, I think as I grow as a person, you, you know, I, every once in a while I'll say something that they find funny, and they're, they're willing to joke with me now. Where I think when you first get there and you're trying to build a culture, it's like this you know, players here, coaches there. And, you know, I think there's a trust. And it doesn't always work. That fourth and five, you know, I wanted to go for it. I'm like, Chad, you good? And Chad's like, yeah, we got this. It didn't work. But there, th that may help later in the game where Chad says, golly, this guy trusts me, right? He knows that I'm good enough to execute in these tight spots. And maybe that has a, a, a meaning later on. I have no idea.